Hello, this is Dr. Harrison coming to you from the Institute of Advanced Studies in Religion and Philosophical uh, Studies down in Bristol, Virginia, also known as my back bedroom. And I'm joined here by my graduate assistant, Blair the Airedale. Last week when we, uh, let, uh, when we uh, stopped, we were talking about the northern kingdom of Israel and what happens to it when the Assyrians come down and destroy it and take them into uh, captivity. And then we see, um, uh, this week we'll see what happens to the southern kingdom. The southern kingdom is Judah. Judah is the uh, lineage of David, and we see that becomes very important to them. Okay, So what we'll see is a sort of a um, um, succession of kings that are from the tribe, and from um, uh, the family of David, some of them are good, some of them are bad, some of them allow idolatry to come in, some of them uh, become vassals, some of them stand up and try to uh, reassert uh, the religious independence of Israel during this time. Now, one of the things that um, we see is the rise of the prophets into, um, into the southern kingdom. And the most notable one probably is Isaiah. Isaiah works very closely with a king who is a good king, Hezekiah. Uh, but Hezekiah has a problem. The Assyrians are making him pay tribute. And um, the people don't like that. And so Hezekiah tries to hold off the Assyrians. Uh, eventually, uh, the Assyrians come down because Hezekiah won't pay them. They, they seize the city, which means they, they uh, sort of encamp around it. No one going in, nothing going out, and the people slowly start to starve. And this is exactly what's described in the book of Chronicles. And then something miraculous happens. One day they go out and they find out that the Assyrians are gone. Now, there is some uh, strong historical, archaeological proof that this, uh, that this story actually happened. And one of the interesting things is it looks like the Assyrians, uh, because they encamped and everything, contracted the plague and it began killing them pretty quickly. Now, uh, Hezekiah eventually will die. Uh, Isaiah sticks around. But uh, eventually the son, Manassas, uh, comes, to, um, comes to power. And he is not a good king. In fact, it's thought that he may have sacrificed one of his sons. Uh, he allowed high places, which are altars to the god Baal. Uh, if you haven't checked out the article I put in your content area, of uh, a temple they found just recently in uh, Israel about uh, Baal. It's very interesting. You should go there and read it. Uh, they practice human sacrifice, black magic. Also, you will notice that they, um, in the Old Testament, the King James Version says they erect poles uh, that the um, good kings would pull down. Uh, Baalism is a sensual, sexual um, religion. It is based on temple prostitution. It is uh, based on the uh, idea of fertility. And these uh, things that were erected were actually phallic symbols. And um, so the King James Version tries to clean that up a little bit. But that's what's being erected all around um, the, the uh, kingdom. And the good kings try to uh, destroy those. It uh, is difficult because many people submit themselves over to um, a, a religion that is very sensual and pleases their senses, and that probably isn't uh, any different from today. Eventually, a king would arise by the name of Josiah. He was a boy king, and he does his best to destroy the pagan religions. There's sort of a revival that takes place when he becomes king. He finds the um, scroll. He finds the Pentateuch in the temple that had been hidden away. He begins uh, a reformation, bringing back the uh, priests and others. He reestablishes the temple as the central place of religion. And uh, there seems to be an honest uh, revival going on in Israel and the destruction of the pagan religions during this time. Now, the Assyrians are eventually um, eliminated from the international scene, and the Babylonians rise up, and this becomes difficult the next kingdom that uh, uh, will play an important role in the history of Israel. Now, Josiah uh, dies on the um, field of the battlefield of Medigo, where many people uh, die eventually. It's uh, uh, a place where many 
different peoples came to have battle there in the plain, as we discussed earlier. And this is where um, Josiah, unfortunately, meets his demise. Uh, then the uh, kings who come after are horrible. Um, they are vassals. They want to pay homage to uh, Babylon. Um, the Egyptians begin to play a role in the politics. Uh, the kings just do what they're told. And uh, no one seems to have the strength or the wherefore to keep uh, Judah independent at this time. It begins to wear on the people as well. And so we see this um, up until the time when the Babylonians will come in. They will destroy the temple. They will carry off everything. It's thought, depending on um, um, your point of view, either the Ark of the Covenant was carried off by the Babylonians, it was either uh, taken down into Egypt or Ethiopia by um, Jeremiah the prophet, or it was saved in some other way. It was taken out into the desert. So, this is the destruction of the southern kingdom, and this sort of wraps up what is the historical period of the old part of the Old Testament, the old history. Uh, but like Arnold Schwarzenegger in The Terminator, the Jewish people will be back.